Okay, so I think it might be useful for me to just actually show you very quickly how I go and program these breaks in Renoise. So I've already chopped this break up here into all these slices. And like I said before, I've left some of them as double hits and I haven't chopped every single individual hit out. And so I really would just start the program. And I'm just thinking about the kick and snare samples. And I'm really using this in the Amen. It has this initial snare here but it has this wicked snare, not that one, this one, which is a way more like wacky snare. It's got a way nicer resonance in it. So I was using that one a lot more in this. And then, so I've got this dun, 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 dun. It's quite a classic sort of beat. So you can hear you have that little, uh, A, it's just rolling on too much. So I've got to try and figure out Maybe I'll put another kick there. That's a bit tighter. And then I have one more shuffle. So I'm like tr tr trying different shuffles. So I've got like kick, snare, kick, snare. Dun, da, dun, dun. Too quick. Bum, bum, bum. And this is like a classic little. So I'm using like shift and spacebar there to play from a line. And then I'm using the numpad enter to loop uh, the section. Bum, 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 ba, bum. Bum, ba, bum. So that's my very basic starting pattern here, and I'm just messing with the kicks and snares at the moment. Cool. And the one thing here is I can hear, it has that like, it has a kick and then it has a little shh before the next kick, and that's because it's chopping. It's catching a little bit of this kind of like noise in here at the end. And so what I do is I put in that, um, CXX command, the cut command. It's going to get rid of that. Cool. So I will go through all of these effects and all the things I'm doing in more detail, but I just want to show you here how I would just kind of get this pattern rolling. And one thing I'm doing here is I'm listening to it. It just kind of, it needs a little roll at the end for me. So let's try with it a little, little this is a kick. Um, and sometimes you can put the kick a little bit quieter as well. Just like that. And then I can go back to dun kang. And then maybe I can do some little cool stuff with the shuffles here. Maybe like copy this one down, whoa, right here. It's not quite right. Maybe I can do like. So by changing the shuffle here, you can create little interesting rhythms like happening inside of the kicks and snares, just with the way the shuffles are sounding against each other. So it's a bit too samey at this second end of the, um, of the next four bar. I think it wants to just be a little bit more interesting. So it's almost this part here. And so this is where I start. This is a snare. And so I would come into my instruments and go find like the long snare maybe or the pitch snares. Let's try snare reverbs. Yeah, one of these. So it was a bit more of like a So 
So now if we listen to it together. So what I might actually do is just finish off this idea and copy these two down because I think it's really important to build your drums in 16 bar loops. And so each one of these blocks uh, for me with my lines per beat value on four and my lines at 64 is a four bar section. And so I've got 16 bars here and actually adding more little variations in these next two bars that I've just duplicated, the last eight bars of this 16 bar chunk we're working on is gonna help keep things interesting and stop things being too repetitive. So let's go and find out what we wanna happen. Sometimes you have to listen to the whole thing just for your ear to, to tell you what's, what to do to change it. I want to hear ding ding ching, ding ching, ding ding ching, ding ching. Maybe go long kick. So I create these long kicks as well, which is just a longer. I can swap out the kick. So I had uh, that problem with that the the sample cutting again there when I had the new one. So I could put that back in. And this is this is a. Actually, a technique that Paradox does talk about is replacing the the double kicks with uh, single kicks, and actually replacing a kick in a hi hat or kick in a shuffle with just a kick with a longer tail does help to slow the beat down even more. And I talked about this in a little bit of the last one, but this is a good example to show you again why I make all these long kick and snare samples is because you can use it to like slow the rhythms and slightly change how everything's grooving. So I might do another one there. That's cool, it needed this um, cut command again. Uh, maybe like a little, maybe a little like, and then with the middle one, a slightly low velocity. Okay, let's listen. No, it's not quite right that. Let's give it a Maybe we can use this to the same uh, as before, come and do like a different. Maybe do a cool look forwards, backwards. That's kind of cool. Maybe we can do a slightly cooler version where we do. So I go and uh, select this instrument um, in the in the editor. When I'm uh, using the BXX command, it's just going to reverse it from the end. But if I put the SSX command in there as well, and I say go like 80, it's now going to trigger from this 80 mark. But if I if I keep moving it up, I can kind of just play with it. And you can get really cool effects that way. I can go like, so that's a bit weird. That's a bit better. So I've actually made the forwards and reversed snare hit a lot tighter now by actually really um, detailing where I want the reverse to start from. So rather than just going like this, I've actually gone and I've chosen a different reverse point. So it's reversing from a bit later and it just sounds much smoother. And then that last snare sometimes, rather than having this uh, double kick again, I can do like a long snare at the end. That's kind of cool. Maybe, maybe it did want that kick. Maybe it did want that kick. And then, okay, let's have a little listen again. Uh, I want to go dad. 
just wants to be the same, doesn't it? No, it doesn't want to have that at all. It wants to be. Uh huh. Okay. So it wants to actually be different. I don't know if it does need this, but it wants to be different. It doesn't want to go to dung dung. It wants to go maybe. Uh huh. Da dung. Dung dag dagang. That's what I want to hear. So I want to hear like rather than going kick kick, I want to go kick snare, and then do a cool little reverse trick here again. Maybe I just copy this one. Ah, oh, that's interesting. A little cut. Okay. Mmm. Bam, 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 bam. Ah, uh, so like I was trying to think of what to do there. And what I actually did was just like select a section that I was liking, copy it down, and it's not worked perfectly, but it's given me ideas of where to go next. You're not always having to just reinvent the wheel and like program everything bit by bit. You can just copy chunks over and then just rework them as you go. So I want to go, I want to go like bomb, bam, bam, bomb, bam, bomb, bam, bomb, bam, bomb, something like that. Da-dum, da-dum. Bum, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. Aha. Uh -huh. So just seeing if in this in context again. Yeah, it just needed a cut to cut at the end of it, didn't it? And then that's not quite right. Um, I, maybe I'll go and get some of this cool stuff here. Cool, so if I just play this whole section now, I've kind of just got the beginnings of like a nice 16 bar pattern where, which is, it feels the same, but there's enough variations going on that it keeps it interesting. And that's kind of the idea. You can't have everything too dissimilar because it doesn't have a groove. So it's about finding the happy medium between like interest and variation and then having like a core foundation of a rhythm in there. and it kind of rolls around again. It's just enough. I mean, it probably needs a little bit more work, but I think that's a good place to leave on and just get on with the rest of this tutorial.